Okay, we have two videos left in this unit, and what we're going to do is we're going to connect our definite integral with the area under the curve that's bound between the curve, whatever the curve may be. Sometimes it could be a line, and the positive and the x-axis that have be positive x-axis. If that area falls below the x-axis, it's considered negative. If the area is fall is above the x-axis, it's positive. And really what we did is we kind of skipped over the section and then we're going to come back and we're going to take a look at it. These are called Riemann sums um, after uh, 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 the person who developed this concept. And what he did was basically say, I can draw rectangles or I can draw different geometry shapes like, tri uh, not triangles, but trapezoids to estimate what that area would be. And we're going to connect the summation notation. This kind of Greek letter sigma means summation notation. And it just simply means that I start at the k value of 1 up then I go up to n of a sub k where um, what this means is I just adding it up just a1 a2 a3 a4 all the way up to a sub k um, and what that ends up going to do is it just takes and adds up area that's that's all it is it's just adding up area of rectangles but don't make this harder than it is you're going to be confused you're going to be confused by the definition I'm going to do that in class one day um, where I'm going to work out a problem by the definition but what ends up happening with these Riemann sums is we draw a reasonable number of, of rectangles, like we draw four rectangles or six rectangles or eight rectangles, and you just find the area of the rectangles. That's all you do. Um, so a, a Riemann sum with a, a P is an expression of R sub P in the form of where P is the partition um, from 1 up to N, where say if I'm, re I'm adding up six rectangles, it would be from 1 up to 6. This is the height of each rectangle. This is the width of each rectangle. If these are the same, then you can go ahead and punch them in you know, your calculator or just write them out. Um, sometimes, a lot of times on the AP exam, they'll let that width right there change. So the height will be different, and, and we have different techniques. So we have um, a left endpoint approximation, we have a right endpoint approximation, we have a midpoint approximation. That's what we look at today. And then in our next video, I'll add to that the trapezoid rule as well. We can connect the sigma notation because what ends up happening eventually with the Riemann sums, and I'll do this in class, is that we let the number of rectangles go to infinity, and then there's no error, no, like no overestimate or underestimate in terms of what the Riemann sum says the area is going to be. Um, in terms of connecting it to the definite integral, though, the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx is the limit as this partition goes to zero. The the little uh, double line with the p in the middle just means that the partition is going to zero of the sum of the rectangles um, of k rectangles, and so I'm just letting that limit go to zero of, um, and, or essentially what I'm letting happen is the the width of each rectangle is going to to zero, um, and and that becomes the definition. And I ask you to write, I, I do ask you to draw a connection between this definition and this sigma notation uh, in tonight's homework or in today's homework. But let's go back and look at how we would apply this. Um, Oh, sorry, that's the last one. Let's do this one. All right, here we go. So my function is 16 minus x squared. So what I'm trying to evaluate is this. I have an integral from 0 up to 3 of 16 minus x squared, where that is my integrand, dx. And I'm going to use Riemann sums. Riemann sums simply means this technique of drawing rectangles. And I took the liberty of going ahead and drawing them before class. And um, what I'm going to do is, I'm this, in this particular case, I'm using left endpoint approximation. And what it means is that I start at the left. I'm using n equals 6 rectangles. And so each of the rectangles are 1 half of a unit wide. That's where this is consistent, OK? If I go left endpoint approximation, um, sometimes uh, written as left hand sum, a left endpoint approximation is I start at the left inter interval, which is at 0. I go up until I hit the graph, and then I go over. And that is the uh, height of my first rectangle. And so if I do that, that height is 16. The width is, is 0.5. So really what happens is I'm going to take the width of the rectangle, which is 0.5. And then I'm just going to multiply that by all these heights added together. And there should be six heights. That's going to be the first one, which is going to be 16. The next one is going to be when I put in 1 half and I go up until I touch the graph. And I did that on my calculator. Let's just see here what, what I get. So it's 15.75 and then 15. And then 13.75 and 12. 
and I think that last one was 9.75. And notice that when I do this, if I'm going left-hand approximation, I stop at 2.5 because that's going to be six heights. That's my first one, that's my second one, that's my third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one. So those are my six heights where I start at zero because it's the start in the left-hand interval and I end delta x away from my right-hand interval. If I added that all up and I multiplied it by 0.5, that's how they came up with the 40, 41.125. If I did it the other way around on my next slide, what I'm doing is the height of those rectangles are going to be figured out by using right endpoint approximation. Oh, let's, let's go back for a second. If I did this, notice that these little areas are above the graph. This is going to be a little bit of an overestimate. And so that's why we want to send the number of rectangles to infinity because then I would have none of that area that's an overestimate. If you look in this particular one, also notice that the graph is concave down and decreasing, and that's why it's an overestimate. In this particular one, it's decreasing concave down again, same integral, but now I'm going right-hand approximation. So I start on the right-hand side, which is at 3. I go over half a unit, and that's my first rectangle. And then I go 2.5, and so on and so forth. And this time, my last height's going to be at 0.5. So I'm still approximating this integral from 0 to 3. 16 minus x squared dx. Um, I'm still using n equals 6 rectangles. This is my, my not my left-hand sum. This is my right-hand sum, sorry. And that just simply means I start on the right-hand side of the interval. I go up until I touch the graph, and I come over, and that's the height of my rectangle. My delta x is still b minus a, which is 3 minus 0 over 6. That's my delta x, or my change in my x values, or how wide these are. That's going to be defined for you. you. You won't have to add up too many rectangles. You may have to add up 6 or 8 or 12. That would be the max. Um, and then just work with your calculator. So I go 0.5, and then I do all my heights. I can go back to my calculator here again, but this time my first one is at 7, and then I just work down. They're going to be exactly the same, but I'm not going to uh, include 16, because this time I included 7. So it's 7 plus 9.75 plus 12, 13.75, uh, 15, I think 15.75. If I add up all those heights, I multiply it by 0 0.5, that's how they got that. Notice that's a little bit of an underestimate. They calculated out the real value of this integral is 39. That's a little bit of underestimate. This one was a little bit of an overestimate. So then what they did was they said, okay, well, if we divide it up into more rectangles, our approximation will be better. Um, or, but one of the things we could do, I have to go to the last slide here, is instead of using a right endpoint approximation or a left endpoint approximation, what I can do is I can use a midpoint approximation. I'm still calculating the same, um, trying to calculate the same interval, but notice that I'll, I'll integral. I have a little bit of overestimate, a little bit of underestimate. Hopefully, they'll cancel each other out. This is called our midpoint approximation. And the midpoint approximation, what it means is, let's take an example down here because you can see it better. I use the midpoint on the interval to determine the height of the rectangle. So on this interval, the height that I'm looking at is at 2.75. So I'm still evaluating this integral from 0 to 3 of 16 minus x squared dx. My delta x is still 0.5. But now, it's what happens is it's 0.5, and then the heights are going to be, this first height is going to be the, the midpoint of this interval. The midpoint of that interval is at f of 0.25, because that's the midpoint between 0 and 0.5. And then the next one's going to be a half a unit away from that. So it's f at 0.75, and then f of 1.25, and then f of 1.75, f of 2.25, and f of 2.75. And hopefully this will be a little bit better of an estimate um, in terms of what we're trying to find our, in terms of our area. Um, one of the things you can do on your calculator, remember, is you can change your table. So let's start at 0.25, and we go up by 0.5. So when I go to here, my table, maybe, nope, come on. Now, 
That's my first height. That's my second height. That's my third height, fourth height, fifth height, sixth height. And that's all the heights I need, and I just add them all up, multiply it by 0.5, and that's how they got their answer right here. <clears throat> Again, getting closer and closer to 39. And my next and last video on, 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 on this area concept, um, we're going to take a look at trapezoid rule, which is just another technique of a Riemann sum uh, for you to practice with and apply. And then we'll try to pull it all together with uh, area, definite integrals, apply to AP exams, geometry shapes, and all that stuff. All right, best of luck on the next uh, assignment.